Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about our fuselage color and the gradient and layer mask. Now, you can do it in two different ways, um, a gradient or a layer mask. Layer mask has many, 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 many more benefits, and that's what I want to be discussing mostly. For those that don't want to get into something what they think is so advanced, it is advanced, but it doesn't mean that you should discredit yourself and think that you cannot do it. You can. But for those that just want to get out of this particular tutorial, if you do, then I would definitely say look up another tutorial. But go down to your paint group, paint here layer, and choose the color that you want. I'm going to say gray. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and alt backspace to fill that color. And I will see you in the next segment. I'm going to undo that with control Z. And Let's go ahead and look at what the differences here are. I still have that paint layer selected. I'm going to press G on the keyboard for my gradient tool. And by default, you have the linear gradient selected, or you could select the radial gradient, or the angular, and so on and so on. We're going to be working with the linear gradient. You could also go into here and you could change the gradient. You can choose different presets. You can also start out with your own and you can go ahead and change its color however way you want. You can add another color to it, then go down here, change its color by just clicking on it. And let's add another one here and we'll say red. And there you go. Now you could also adjust these sliders back and forth and do it to your heart's content. When you're done, if you like the gradient, you can go up here and save it or you can load old gradient that you created. I'm going to go back to the regular preset, which is foreground to background color. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this whole thing. Well, actually, I want my fuselage color, so let me bring up my color palette here, my little legend that we made earlier. Press OK. And again, by default, it is set for foreground to background color. So if I were to start here and work my way here, it is going to fill it in with my foreground color to my background color. I could leave it like that and start from this side to get the effect above. Or I could just press X on the keyboard to toggle the two colors. Now right here is pretty close to what I have up here. But now, a couple things that I have to point out. I have a different bottom color, and the bottom color helps the, you know, all the seams line up perfect. Some particular fuselages, you might actually paint the whole entire thing, including the bottom, with a gradient. And if you do so, you want to make sure that this is totally straight, even off a pixel. Or, I don't know if you could see it, but that line is just barely crooked. If I were to let go, it looks perfect. But once you get into the sim, since you're dealing with a small transition here of differences, you're going to see it. You're going to see the fact that your bottom edge here does not line up to your fuselage. So, a little tip, when you're drawing your gradient, if you press shift, you can see no matter where I move my other end here, it is staying perfectly horizontal. Okay? Now, how do you do a gradient, or what is the laws behind the gradient tool? Where I click, where I start my gradient selection, I am telling it everything behind this I want to be my foreground color, which is white. The distance that I draw my actual gradient line is saying between these two points, I want that transition. And when I let go, Everything after the point to where I let go, I want to be that color. So again, where you have that line, you're telling it that line, that's where I want it to fade from one color to the other. So if I were to do like a one inch line here and let go, I have all blue, all white, and within those, that area that I drew my line, that is the transition. Okay? So, 
why paint with a layer mask? Why use layer masks at all? Well, if you remember the written tutorial, or if you have read the written tutorial in the alpha channel section, you're going to notice that the two are almost identical. They are identical. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this whole thing in here with, say, that blue color, which is now my background color, so control backspace. And I'm going to go down to the bottom here, and we have this little shortcut called Add Layer Mask. I'm going to click it, and let's look at what it did. Now it just added this little thing here, a little link, and here's a, another preview pane, which is my thumbnail, or my color. Here is my actual layer mask. Here is my color. And if you look over to the left, my color palette is changing. I'm going to toggle these two so we can see the difference better. And that is because this is my colors, which is, you know, all of my color. And the layer mask itself only works with black and white. So let me select the brush tool. And again, if you remember that particular tutorial, you're going to remember that black hides, white shows. So if I paint with white, I'll go ahead and increase my brush size here. If I paint with white, nothing's happening. The whole thing's already white. If I flip these and I paint with black, I flipped with X, then where I'm painting, it's saying I want you to hide everything. Okay? I know this is confusing at first, but don't give up on yourself. You can do it! If you look down here in my layer mask window, you'll see where I painted with the black. So a lot of people when they first started, I know I did, when I first started it, I would do something like this and I was like, how do I get it back? So I would sit here and I'd flip the color, I'd have my brush tool selected and I'd be painting away and nothing would happen. Well the blue is there. It's just being masked by what I'm telling it to. So if I want that back, I just switch my color here to white and I paint with white. So as you can see, there is that little bit of complexity, that word was difficult for me to say, uh, complexity, you know, for using layer masks, but that's it. You just learn the hardest part. Now for the benefits of a layer mask. So with the gradient tool, if I were to paint a gradient, a white to black gradient, that is saying from here I want you to show it, from here I want you to hide it. So if I were to paint a gradient, we can see that it is showing to hiding. All right. Now I want this to be opposite from my particular paint, so I'll go from say around door to door and press shift, keep them straight, and there's my gradient. Okay, so what's the benefits of this? Why bother doing it? Why not just fill it with a color or fill it with a gradient? Well, let's say later down the road that I use this particular paint kit again, and I'm going to. I'm not going to use a fresh paint kit. Why would I use a fresh paint kit after I've gone through all the trouble of tailoring this one to my own, you know, wants, needs? By doing this, later on down the, the, the road, if I wanted to change the color, it's simple. Rather than looking at it here, I'm going to go ahead and open up this one again. Let's get that full screen here. And then down here, you can see that I have the different colors. I have my color, and then I have my actual gradient. And I'm, I just want to change the color. I don't want to lose this gradient. Let's say I did the bottom with the same gradient, or let's say I did the engine pylons with the gradients and the wings. And those have already been matched up. I spent seven months trying to match up those gradients. And yeah, you could spend a long time in paint. So I don't want to ruin the actual gradient. I just want to change the color. So I can just go ahead down here to my color window, choose a different color, and let's say something disgusting like green, bright, bright green. So now if I fill in that particular color layer, there we go. I have just changed the actual color without ruining the gradient. I have done nothing destructive whatsoever. And I could play with this all day long. I could keep changing my colors. If I want, I could change the opacity, uh, make it a little lighter, darker, change my fill, 
We'll get into all that later. But you can see the benefits of this. You can see just how much uh, for the women, for the ladies out there. There you go. It just has so much potential. And again, you're in a non-destructive environment now. You're painting in a way to where you can quickly change things, you know, whenever you want. So this is why I chose to paint with a layer mask. Because not only will you benefit from this down the road, but you're also going to start to understand a concept in painting or in imagery in alpha channels and everything else. And if you start with something like this, it's the same exact thing once you get into alpha channels and everything else. So it's going to just make things a lot easier uh, for you to grasp later. And you're going to retain all this information the more you use it. So now let's take what we have here and use that for our own paint, for your own paint. In my particular paint, you're going to notice down here in my thumbnail, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I actually have trimmed out that area, the areas that I want my this particular um, color gradient. But I would more recommend probably doing it this particular way. And that is go to your layer to where you have your gradient. And what I want you to do here is I want you to first notice that it is still filled all with blue. And then we have the actual mask. Make sure your mask is selected. Go down to your white base layer. And don't select it, but I want you to press control. And then you'll see that the cursor is changed to a selection. And with a selection. And left click while holding control. And you're going to draw a selection around that white base. Now, we don't want the white base, but we want everything else. So how do we do that? We inverse it, or invert the selection. And we do so by either going to the Select menu and choosing it, Inverse, or press Control-Shift-I for Inverse. And now everything else is selected. Now, since I want to hide everything else, or I don't want that gradient to show in all those locations, I want to fill it with black. And black being my foreground color right now, I'm going to press Alt, Backspace, and fill it. And there we have it. Now I just need to deselect it, Control D, and we're done. We're ready for the actual stripe. And we will get to that in the next segment. See you then.